Hey, what's up guys? I'm gonna do a cooking video in the new kitchen. So, uh, just thought I'd give you a really brief tour of the kitchen. It's obviously not that big. But, uh, it's a kitchen. It's my kitchen, it works fine. <laughs> so, today, let's take a peek around real quick. A little decor up top there. That thing in the middle is an old, uh, um, I'm, you know what? I don't even know what it is. Uh, I'm assuming it's a tea kettle of sorts or just some way to, to boil water, but uh, found it on the property outside, so I cleaned it up real nice and uh, threw it up there. It looks kind of, I don't know, I think it looks good. Doesn't really serve a purpose, just looks nice. There I am in the reflection. Hello. And uh, stove, counter, sink, you know, you get the deal. There's, of course, the old hot sauce. Gotta have the hot sauce ready to go. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, what I have here for just for my cooking and, and eating pleasure, um, start from the top, I have a little bit of mamba, black mamba, really, really good stuff, one of my favorite um, super hot sauces, um, one beep, drop at a time, that's uh, also pretty good, pretty hot, Melinda's Naga Jaloki I have there, I have not tried it yet, it's still uh, sealed up, I also have the Total Insanity, which kind of has a Mexican flair, you know, Dave's Total Insanity, uh, I don't know if I posted the video or not, but I just did a review on that, so that's pretty good on uh, Mexican food. I have the sauce that killed Kenny, which I have not tried that yet either. Of course, I have two of my sauces, the clean slice and the dull edge, and then I have some frostbite. So, a little selection there in the kitchen at all times for, for cooking. Got to have my coffee in the morning, so I got my coffee goodies there. And, uh, I don't know, that's pretty much it. So anyway, there's the tour of the kitchen. People keep wanting to see more of the house. So, um, yeah, what are we cooking today? We're cooking chicken franchise. Now, this is my version of chicken franchise. Um, doesn't mean it's how everyone does it or how it should be done. This is just how I do it. Comes out just fine. So, and for a side dish, uh, I'm just going to do some root vegetables. I have a fresh carrot here that I got from the store with the greens on it. I, it's, you know, just straight out of the ground carrot. Um, I don't usually buy the bag stuff because I don't need as much carrot. Plus, uh, it's just better that it hasn't been tampered with or anything. So anyway, um, one carrot and another root vegetable here. I have a parsnip. And I love parsnips. In fact, I had a friend who turned me on to mashed parsnips, which is <laughs> really, really good. And it's the first time I had it was this year, and now like I eat them all the time. Um, so that'll be a side dish with a little bit of... Uh, you know, garlic in there in the pan. We'll do that at the very end. It'll just be real simple. I'll chop it up real, you know, small slices and we'll saute it up. But anyway, for the chicken franchise, um, obviously you want your chicken. I got this obviously on the first. I date all my stuff. Usually I'll buy the, the meats in a big pack and I'll separate in the bags and date it and throw it in the freezer. You know, it's a cheaper way of, of uh, you know, buying in bulk and at the beginning of the month and then letting it last throughout the month. So anyway, have chicken breasts here. They're just thin chicken breast, uh, two in a bag, and I'm making four of them. And I probably won't eat all of it, I'll just save some for lunch tomorrow, whatever leftover I have. So the chicken, uh, a white wine, which is not necessary, but we're going to deglaze the pan later and adds a little something something. Here's a Woodbridge Chardonnay from 2009. Um, why? Only because it's the only white wine I have in the house right now. I uh, don't drink, I just, when I get wine and, and liquor as gifts at Christmas time and stuff. Uh, for people who don't know I drink, I save it. And this is what I do with it, I cook with it. And occasionally, I mean really on a, uh, uh, it's a rare situation, but I might have a, a glass of something in celebration to something. But I don't just drink. So anyway, um, that's the white wine for later for deglazing. We're gonna need some flour. Um, I've always been using this Wonder flour. It's, uh, it's much better. Comes out, I mean when you're cooking like making chicken cutlets or um, I don't know, anything. You're breading anything to cook with. It works so much better, in my opinion. It comes out so much better than using regular, like, all-purpose flour. So I've been using that. Um, by the way, I realize the only um, bottle opener I have is on my Swiss Army knife. So this is the Marbo version. So I'll be using that later to open the wine, as well as I'll prepare the whole meal with the, uh, the knife blade in the Victorinox here. So that'll be kind of fun, something different. Um, besides the chicken, uh, we have one lemon. We have a little chunk of butter here, maybe a little less than a quarter of a stick. We have some fresh um, 
parsley, which obviously came off the top of the parsnip, and two cloves of garlic. Again, that's for our root vegetable side dish. All right, frying pan and some dirty water dog <laughs> style tongs. All right, first things first, I want to uh, use my little bottle opener here and pop the cork on this bad boy. And for anyone who has Swiss Army knives and don't use them, <laughs> you probably, most people never use the bottle opener, but uh, it does work. It's a functional tool, it's not just there for looks, so I'm going to prove that right now for you. Okay, so you see there, it's in the bottle, or in the cork rather. And what I do is just put my hand like this, point your finger on the one side and the rest of my fingers on the other, and I grip the neck of the bottle, but I grip it high so that when I squeeze my left hand here, it also kind of pushes up on my fingers, and I do that as I'm pulling up with the other hand. And you can really just pop that out real easy. All right, and then once you get to the top, you don't need your other hand. And you make that ever loving fun sound, which I can't do with my, I can't replicate it with my pinky. Let's see, let's hear it again. We all love that. Okay, so there we go, put that off to the side. So now you know the bottle opener or corkscrew works fine. I guess that's what it's called, a corkscrew. I don't know why I call it a bottle opener. Anyway, okay, so that works. So now, let's take a look outside. Why not, right? Still live in the woods. Man, do I love the woods. But I don't like leaves. I've been spending a lot of time lately cleaning up leaves outside. So, let's bring you back down here. Ooh, doo -doo 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 -doo. All right. Let me bring over here so I have some room to actually work. And I'm going to be using the, like I said before, the um, Victorinox knife here to prep all my stuff. All right. Pretty cool. All right, we don't need the garlic right away. We don't need the lemon right away. And we don't really need to cut any of this right away, to be honest. But what the heck, I have it now. Let me just prep this stuff. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do, take the knife blade on my carrot. This, both these vegetables have been washed, but I wanna peel them. Now what I'm gonna do is just hold it kind of um, square to the, uh, the vegetable and just scrape off the outer layer, okay? This is the easiest way to peel the carrot. And we're not waxing our carrot, we're peeling it. <laughs> but that's something you, you probably hear from Pete over at the Army channel, not me. Nonetheless, I said it. So there you go. Okay. Now do the other side. Now obviously you can see the difference here. Be clean. Well, it's hard to see in through the camera here, but obviously the dirty outside is darker and what I've peeled is lighter, so for me it's easy to see. So, you don't need a fancy uh, vegetable peeler. You a nice sharp blade, just hold it square to whatever you're peeling and scrape. There you go, we're gonna knock off our end here. And there's our prepared carrots. Put that aside for later, we'll cut that up. Our garbage. Do the same thing to our parsnip here. Okay, just be careful doing this. That's all. Now this one, you can obviously see the difference a lot better. It's nice and pure white. And then there's our crappy outside. It's been handled by who know who knows how many strangers. Okay, I'm just knock off the end there. It's not looking so tasty. Okay, flip it around. Now this is the hard part because I really have nothing to really grip onto. So just be careful. When you're doing this, you could also push this into a um, like a kitchen towel, so you have more stability than uh, than I do here on the cutting board. It will slide around on you. So just cut at your own discretion. Be careful. That's all. Go slow. There's no race here. Almost done. <laughs> now most of the parsnips on top here, so I don't want to cut it off too 
too low. All right, get all that crap out of the way. Knock off our end. And there's our prepared parsnip. Okay, so we'll slice it up with our carrot later. Good stuff. All right, throw all this crap out. And then I'll get on to the next step. But there you go, Victorinox in use. How many YouTube videos? I mean, there's thousands of night videos. How many videos do you actually get to see one of these in use, right? Usually people are showing them off, they're not using them. But I like to use them. Got our chicken here, we got a plate. Basically, we're gonna bread our chicken with the Wondra. Um, you could use a, an egg wash, I don't. Um, it's just easier, it's also, you know, less involved. Um, if you don't have eggs in the house, then it's not a problem. If you happen to have eggs and you wanna make your, your crust or your um, coating thicker and richer, then you can certainly add an egg wash. Now you could just do egg whites to be a little bit healthier, but if you want the full blown like chicken cutlet style, you know, chicken uh, with a thicker crust like that, just use the regular egg wash as if you were making chicken parm or anything like that. All right, pretty straightforward, but you would basically have your flour in one section, a little bowl of, uh, of you know, beaten eggs, then you dip into the egg, dip into the flour. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways you could do it. All right, so we got our chicken here. So what I'm gonna do is, Prep the flour first, let's do that. And our flour, put it on the plate. All right. Don't need too much, I don't have a lot of chicken here. So put it on the plate, spread it out evenly. All right, right now I can put the butter in the pan. I'm not gonna turn it on yet, but putting a little chunk in the pan there. Okay. Now, mm, gotta regroup, oh. You need a little bit of olive oil. I didn't mention it in the beginning, but you know, I just mentioned it. So there you go. So bring it over here for a second. Got a little bit of butter in the pan, a little bit of olive oil, not too much. And uh, since I'm going to be braying these and throwing them right in, I will turn the heat on now. So let's do that. I'm going to put the heat on like three quarters to high. So if you have a scale that goes from 1 to 10, 10 being high, put it on like, you know, 7 or 8, somewhere around there. So it starts to get hot, and obviously as the butter melts, just stir, evenly stir it in. Alright, so as that's warming up, let's take our chicken out. It's a fun way to open a Ziploc bag. Make sure our butter and oil is mixed in real nice in the pan. So way nothing sticks and it gets nice and crispy. Come on, because once I, you know, flour both sides of the chicken, I'm gonna throw them right in here to start browning up and cooking. Throw it in the flour, flip it over. Same deal on the other side. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect here. We're just lightly flouring it. Okay, throw it in the pan. Okay, so they're in our pan here. Just cooking away. Give this in a couple more seconds and I'll flip them over. And then move on to the next step. All right guys, just flip these guys over. Now you can see it's browned a little bit on the one side. It's not completely browned. I mean, it doesn't look like it came off the grill. That's because I have skinnier pieces of chicken and I don't want to overcook them. All right, if you get them nice and brown looking, they might look great, but they're going to be dry as, you know, shoe leather. So certainly not something you want to do is overcook your chicken. So I'm going to let the other side cook. When these are cooked completely through, I'm going to take them off and put them on a paper towel to drain, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so those stay off on the side. Okay, bring it back over here. I took the pan off the heat for a second. Oh, let me turn this so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so now what we wanna do is deglaze the pan, put in our lemon, um, and just really get a sauce going, okay? This is obviously what's gonna flavor the chicken itself. So, back on the heat. Gonna prep our lemon. Okay, 
Again, Swiss Army knife. Don't need much more. Roll it a little bit, get the juices flowing. All that good stuff. All right. Cut our lemon in half. Just like so. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the knife just to pop the seeds out. Okay, this way I don't squeeze them into the dish so I don't chew on them later. Don't need the seeds. Okay. Do the same with the other half. Now before I get the juice and the lemon, I'm going to cut two slices off just for to put on top for presentation and also just for a fresh lemon flavor as well. So the, the bigger half is this one. So that's what I'm going to do right now is just take two thin slices, which is easy to do once you have a nice sharp knife. All right, and we'll put those slices, oh, another seed hiding. Put those slices to the side for later. Okay, so now, coming back over here, drop in our lemon juice. Okay, that's one half of the lemon. Now we're going to pour in our wine, and we're going to use about a half a cup, three quarters of a cup. Let that simmer. Mmm, smells good. Okay, squeeze in the rest of our lime juice. Or wine, lemon. What am I talking about? Okay. All right. Wash your hands again. Whenever you're cooking, you, can, you should constantly be washing your hands every time you touch something. Now, usually, when you're all done, you'll kind of salt and pepper your food, but I'm going to salt and pepper our sauce. So, just a little bit of salt, don't need much. You can always put more later. And a little bit of pepper, black pepper. And for mine, I'm also gonna throw in some herbs. This is just Italian um, herb mix. It's like uh, oregano, dried parsley, um, Thyme, there's something else in there, marjoram or whatever. Just a little little sprinkle. Doesn't come out very fast in this, so I really have barely a pinch in there. Just gives it a little something something. <coughs> so we're gonna cook this down. to fish out some of the extra seeds that somehow got in there from the lemon. Little baby seeds. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, let's see. How'd you get in there? It's tricky tricky. <laughs> But you want to just pour that sauce directly over your chicken. All right. Bring the pan back over. We're going to be cooking our veggies in a minute. So let that just linger for a little bit. What I'm going to do is cut our carrot. Cut that end off. Just cut a bunch. Let me start at the fat end. Just going to cut a bunch of uh, thin slices on here. Because I'm doing them in the pan top, I don't want them to be too thick, otherwise you're going to have too much bite. Okay. 
Okay. That should be good. All right, now our parsnip, same deal. So our water is almost completely evaporated. I'm going to throw in a little bit more olive oil to our pan. And just enough to coat it. Mix this up a little bit. And turn the heat back down just to low because our vegetables are almost cooked. Come over here, we're going to add our garlic, but first we have to cut it. So we have our two garlic cloves. One little one and one big job of the hut looking thing. And just like uh, good fellas, you want to slice it almost like with a razor blade. So thin that it melts away in the pan. All right. See these pieces are paper, paper thin. All right, we'll spread those out. And same with the other one. Sorry if you can't really. Eh, my hands in the way the whole time, wasn't it? Let's try this. Trick to this is a good sharp knife. These nice long slender cuts. I'll spin to the side. I'll cut some this way too. Okay. All right. Now we can throw our garlic in here. Bump the camera again because that's always fun. guys I have no idea where where I left off there um, I'm, I'm fairly sure that uh, I thought I was recording and I wasn't did you ever do that you know people who make videos here you go to hit record but it was already on record so you're really stopping it and I hope that wasn't the case but um, anyway if it if it was the case um, just did the vegetables in a uh, saute pan slice them up real thin there's two root, root vegetables the carrots and the parsnips um, put them in a in the pan with a little bit of water to kind of steam them first and then once they were almost cooked they had just a little bit of bite left in them um, I put in uh, just a little bit of butter just a tiny tiny bit and uh, uh, sliced the garlic very thin um, after that towards the very tail end I just uh, hit it with a little bit of fresh parsley and stirred it up okay so we have our chicken franchise and our root vegetables 
and it looks awesome, but uh, how does it taste? As far as our drinks for today, of course you can pour yourself a nice glass of that wine if you're, if you're into that, but uh, I'm not, so I just have a bottle of water and a little V8 juice, which I think tastes disgusting. Um, but it's good for you, and it, it helps with you know my overall nutrition. I don't really have a lot of vegetables in my diet. I mean, besides dinner, I never have vegetables. Um, I will occasionally snack on like uh, carrots or celery or something, but not often is not often enough. So, V8 is a, a great supplement um, if you're not taking like a vitamin or something. So I down one of those little ones once a day, no matter what. Usually with dinner. So anyway, that's it. Let's uh, you know get into this. See if it tastes any good. Because what's the point if it looks good, right? If it doesn't taste good, I'll use my little knife just to complete the whole theme here with Tornox. Okay, chicken is perfectly cooked. All right, absolutely perfect. This is what I was talking about. When you first take it out of the pan, it might not necessarily look as brown or as, as good as you want it to be, but trust me, you do not want to have overcooked chicken. It just ruins the whole thing. So anyway, let's try this first. Mmm. I outdid myself again. Absolutely delicious. Um, really good. Same as you would, you know, get in a restaurant. You got that nice, strong lemon flavor, but with the, um, you know, the wine rendering everything in the pan and, you know, pulling up all those little bits that have all the flavor and stuff. It, it's, it's amazing. It's really, really good. <clears throat> mm. Delicious. <clears throat> now I can tell you how I did this just with a little bit of wonder. Wonder. Wondra, I believe is how you pronounce it. Anyway, with no egg wash, it comes out great. Um, I don't think you need like a, a crust per se. I mean, it's just, it's really, really good as is. Let's try the vegetables. Little root veggies. Mmm. Mmm. -mm. Mmm. <laughs> I, can't, I can't taste us, you know, taste something and express how good it is without sounding kind of pornographic. But it is, it's really good. Downright scrumptious. So um yeah, try this at home. I mean if you never made chicken franchise, if you don't like lemon, it's obviously not a, a dish you want to try. <laughs> I suppose you could do the same thing with uh you know what, you could probably do the same exact thing with oranges. I never actually thought of that until just a second and make like a oriental style orange chicken. That sounds great. And your veggie on the side can be like broccoli. It would be like homemade Chinese food. Um, yeah, I never tried that, but that sounds great. In fact, next time I think I might try that. Wow. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <clears throat> Really, really good. All right, guys. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch watch me eat my whole dinner, but it really is very, very good. <clears throat> so, I'll let you guys go. I'm going to drink this nasty stuff. It's so gross. It's like cold, non-delicious tomato soup to me. Comment below. Do you like uh, V8? I've had their, like, the fruit version. That's not bad, but I don't know. Regular V8 juice just doesn't do anything to me. Ugh. Ugh. Makes me twitch. But it's good for you. It's darn right good. <clears throat> I gotta wash it down with some water now. Alright, well, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. I'm gonna enjoy the rest of my dinner and then watch a movie. Take it easy, guys.